Welcome back to Deal Unboxing and today we're going to review D-Link's AX1500 Wi-Fi 6 router. This is one of the first Wi-Fi 6 routers from D-Link. So in this in-depth review we're going to go over the features, Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test to see how well D-Link's Wi-Fi 6 router performs in the sub $100 market of Wi-Fi 6 routers. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. Also please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. So let's do a quick unboxing. In the box we have a D-Link Wi-Fi 6 router, power adapter, network cable and a quick start guide. Now let's look at the specs. The router is powered by 1.5 GHz tri-core processor, 256 MB SD RAM, 128 MB flash, Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax standard, router supports dual band 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz with speed up to 300 megabits per second and 1200 megabits per second with 80 hertz channel support. Router also supports OFDMA, MU-MIMO and BSS coloring. It also has a voice control support using Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Router also supports WPA3 wireless encryption. Router also supports D-Link Wi-Fi mesh which means you can mix and match D-Link Wi-Fi mesh enable extenders to create a seamless mesh network. Router also supports iOS and Android apps and weighs only 410 grams and it costs only $90 at the time of this review. Now let's look at the ports and design. Router has four 1 gig LAN ports on the back of the router and there's a 1 gig WAN port for internet. There's a reset button and a power cable input. And on the front of the router there's a LED status lights and there are plenty of ventilations on the top and bottom. The router has four external antennas and they're not removable. Overall build quality is good for standard plastic construction. Now let's do the Wi-Fi performance coverage and speed test. So we've placed the D-Link Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test we are using Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card. It's a 2x2 Wi-Fi 6 card installed in our laptop which is the fastest Wi-Fi 6 card available in the market with speed up to 2.4 gigabits per second. And we are also using iPhone 11 which also supports Wi-Fi 6 standards. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floors of the house to see how well D-Link Wi-Fi 6 router performs in speed and coverage. In this test we will use Fast.com which is powered by Netflix to perform internet speed test and also using iPerf 3 performance test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf 3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth on the wireless or wired networks. Also we will be using only 5 GHz channel for best performance results. And we have our MacBook Pro connected to the router by Ethernet and configured as iPerf 3 server. So let's get started. I have 1 gig Verizon Fios connection and for the first test I have connected a MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable. And using fast.com speed test, we're getting close to 1 gig internet speed, confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed, which is surprising and good start for this test. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I've placed the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed right next to the router. And as you can see we are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 band with speed up to 1.2 gigabits per second because router only supports 80 MHz channel. And using fast.com speed test I'm getting 580 megabits per second download and 460 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test we're getting 89 megabits per second download speed. And I ran the test multiple times but seems like there's a firmware issue with the network switch of the router because I was never able to get past 100 megabits per second bandwidth speed using iPerf and you can see the results in the following test as well. Now let's run iPerf 3 test on iPhone 11 but we are going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With iPerf 3 5 stream we are able to get max bandwidth up to 94 megabits per second as well. I hope D-Link will fix this issue in the future firmware updates. I want to mention that there are no settings being modified on the router except Wi-Fi SSID is being renamed and Wi-Fi password. This is out of the box factory default settings. Now using fast.com speed test on the iPhone 11, we're able to achieve 550 megabits per second wireless speed. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router, iPhone and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection. First using iPhone 11 with iPerf 3 5 stream speed test, we're still only able to achieve 94 megabits per second wireless speed. Now let's run fast.com internet speed test on iPhone 11 and we are able to get 320 megabits per second download and 220 megabits per second upload speeds. Now let's move to the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and here we still have good Wi-Fi signals. When running fast.com speed test we are getting 390 megabits per second download and 280 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And now running iPerf 3 5 stream test on the laptop, we were able to achieve only 95 megabits per second bandwidth speed. 
Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a next Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here still have good Wi-Fi signals and solid connection. And using iPerf 3 5 stream wireless speed test, we are still getting 92 megabits per second wireless speed on iPhone 11. And using fast.com speed test, we are getting 290 megabits per second download and 200 megabits per second upload speeds. And on the laptop using fast.com speed test, we are getting 330 megabits per second download and 290 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iPerf 3 speed test on the laptop, we are getting an average of 97 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now I move to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls in between the router, iPhone 11 and laptop. Here 5 GHz channel is struggling to have good Wi-Fi connection on both laptop and iPhone. So Wi-Fi connection is switching between 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz channels. First running fast.com speed test on laptop, we able to achieve 120 megabits per second download and 22 megabits per second upload speed. And running iPerf 3 5 stream test, and running iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are able to achieve 23 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now at the same location, we are going to switch to iPhone 11. And as you can see, 5 GHz channel is not able to send signals at this location. But using 2.4 GHz channel and using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are still able to get 59 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And using fast.com speed test, we are able to get 64 megabits per second download and 34 megabits per second upload wireless speed. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls in between the router, iPhone and laptop. Here we still have good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are using iPhone 11 and we are still getting 97 megabits per second wireless speed. And using fast.com speed test, we are able to achieve 190 megabits per second download and 61 megabits per second upload speed. At the same location switching to laptop and using fast.com speed test, we are getting 330 megabits per second download and 200 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iPerf 3 we are still stuck at 97 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls in between the Wi-Fi 6 router, iPhone and laptop. Here we have very good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test on iPhone 11, we are getting 92 megabits per second wireless speed. And using fast.com internet speed test, we are able to achieve 370 megabits per second download and 340 megabits per second upload speed. Now switching to laptop, we have good strong signals here. And running fast.com speed test, we are getting 410 megabits per second download and 340 megabits per second upload wireless speed. And using iPerf 3, we are still getting 89 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Now we are going to do a final router network Ethernet speed test. In this test, we have both iPerf 3 server and client laptops connected to the router by Ethernet. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are still stuck under 100 megabits per second bandwidth speed. And again, I hope D-Link will fix this issue in the future updates. Now let's walk through the router setup and its options. D-Link router setup was easy. All you have to do is download the router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have Fios with the Ethernet connection, you can connect your router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable. You don't need modem for that. Then just follow the instructions on the app to complete the setup. On the router's main screen on the top, you will be greeted with the information about your internet connection, Wi-Fi router, and number of connected devices. So if you select internet or router or connected devices icon, you will see detailed information about each category in the bottom when you scroll down. Or you can go to different settings from the available menu on the top. We are going to go over the settings really quickly to see what are the available options. Under settings tab, we have router setup wizard, internet, wireless, and dealing cloud options. Under features tab, we have QoS, firewall, port forwarding, website filter, static routes, dynamic DNS, and quick VPN options. And under management tab, we have time and schedule, system logs, system admin, user, upgrade, and statistics option. So when I tried to go to the wireless settings, router crashed, and I wasn't able to connect to any settings. And after some troubleshooting and frustration, I had to reset the router, and found out there was a newer firmware available. From the factory, router came with firmware version 1. So if you buy this router, the first thing I would do is upgrade the latest firmware. But I want to mention that all the tests we did with the latest firmware. So after the firmware update, I was able to get into the wireless settings, and other settings. Here you can select different Wi-Fi settings and there are plenty of options to configure, including WPA3 settings. You can also select different Wi-Fi channels manually or leave everything to default. 
Overall, Rotor gives you a lot of control over advanced settings, and that is a big plus point in my opinion. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default. Now let's do a final summary. Overall, D-Link Wi-Fi 6 router did perform good in this review. Router offers good hardware with industry standard 1.5 GHz tri-core CPU for AX 1500 category. Router has good Wi-Fi 6 coverage and will be able to cover 2500 to 3000 square feet house without any problem, even though I was testing in 5000 square feet house. Router also offers good advanced settings to choose from. So if you're a power user, you can appreciate all the available options. But D-Link has a lot of work to do with the firmware. I hope they will fix all the issues we have mentioned. Router is also priced at $90, but competition is getting tough in sub $100 Wi-Fi 6 category because there are some low price Wi-Fi 6 routers available as well which offer similar hardware and performance and having these firmware issues are not going to help. I mean, what do you guys think of dealing DIR X1560 also known as AX1500 Wi-Fi 6 router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.